Tonight's project is a Holocrafters Model S120 communications receiver. This was actually their entry level model from the early 60's. This replaced the old S38 line. This unit actually belongs to an old classmate of mine who I recently reconnected with and he asked me if I could try to fix this thing. He actually worked for the local TV station for a number of years and and tried to get the one of the station engineers to repair this but he claimed it needed a set of tubes and he couldn't get the tubes. That's what this piece of paper is taped to the top of the receiver and this just uses run-of-the-mill miniature tubes 12BE6, 12BA6 50 C5 and 30 and or excuse me 12 AV6 has a selenium rectifier in it so no rectifier tube but anyway these tubes should be easy enough to find if they're indeed bad okay I'm not gonna just uh, plug this up I'm gonna open it up and eyeball it especially since there's a strong possibility that someone else has already been in this thing Here's the top of the chassis. Looks to be in decent shape. Here are the four tubes here. These are your IF transformers. This is your power supply filter capacitor, which is most likely bad by now. Here's the underside of the chassis. I don't I don't see any obvious monkey business that's taking place here, so all this looks good. However, I see a whole bunch of capacitors. It's going to have to be replaced, just as standard procedure. Since this is one I'm repairing for someone, I'm going to cover all of my bases here. And all of these old capacitors are either likely leaky or soon will be leaky. And you notice we have a couple of bumblebee capacitors in here. This one and this one right here. And those are about the sorriest capacitors that were ever made. They were supposed to be an improvement over the old wax paper capacitors of the 30s and 40s, but actually they are much worse. Okay, since everything looks in pretty good shape on the chassis, we'll bring the radio up slowly with our AC power supply, and I'll monitor the current draw, make sure nothing looks excessive there. And as far as antennas, this set uses a ferrite bar antenna for the standard broadcast band. And there used to be a whip antenna that mounted to the back of the case, but that's long since been gone, according to the owner. So I have the external antenna screw for the short wave bands connected to a length of wire running outside the building. So let's fire this up, see what happens. I'm on the one amp scale. We're starting out at zero volts. And I'm not getting any current draw or does not appear to be any signs of life coming from the receiver. Well, I take that back. We do have some signs of life coming out of the receiver. The dial lights are illuminating, so that's a good sign so far. And we have audio out of the speaker. Our current draw is minimal, so that's a good sign. And like I said, this filter capacitor is bad. I can tell that by the hum that I'm hearing from the speaker with the volume control all the way down. And the degree of hum depends on how bad the capacitor is. This one's not nearly as bad as some of them, but it's bad enough that it needs to be replaced. Move this switch to receive. There we go. Well, the standard broadcast band is working. So she spent a month in the hospital, and she's lucky to be alive. They're saying it's a miracle. And not only that, but I'm going to do coma to protect her heart and her brain so she wouldn't... Okay, so we have something on standard broadcast.
dancing on the first short wave band. Oh, there we go. Short wave band number two. There's WWV, so we know that band is operational. Band number four, our shortwave band number three. And this band may be dead. He mentioned something about he thought one or two of the bands was inoperative. But judging by what I'm getting so far, I think this will be a fairly routine repair slash restoration. Okay, I am getting a little something on band four now after wiggling the switches, which indicates they all need to be cleaned. There's really not a whole lot up here on this band anymore, but occasionally you can get something. Okay, so we've determined that all four bands at least have reception. Now, let's do what we have to do to improve that reception. First order of business is to clean all of the switches and potentiometers with this control cleaner, and then we'll work each control back and forth several times to work the cleaner in. And that should ensure proper operation of all of the switches and controls. Okay, I've now cleaned all of the controls and they're operating much more smoothly. And now I'm cleaning the tube sockets and the pins on the tubes and we accomplish that by spraying a little bit of contact cleaner on the tube pins and then inserting the tubes back in their sockets two or three times. And this set has all of its original Halicrafters branded tubes, date coded the 49th week of 1965. So this radio was likely made in late 65 or early 66, probably towards the tail end of the tube type model S120 era. If I'm not mistaken, there was a model S120A that was a solid state radio. Okay, now the next thing we'll want to do is replace all of these old capacitors that I mentioned. And we'll also want to replace this selenium rectifier here. And even though it's still working, uh, these selenium rectifiers do have a tendency to, number one, become weak and produce less voltage on their output than what they should. And number two they'll short out and stink to high heaven. So what we'll have to do is replace that rectifier with a 1N4007 silicon diode and an appropriate dropping resistor to get the voltage down right. And I'll explain more about that whenever we get to that phase of the restoration. Okay, I replaced all of the capacitors in the Holocrafters radio and now we'll replace the selenium rectifier with a modern silicon diode. Here's the selenium rectifier right there. It's not your traditional looking large orange or blue finned metal object, but it's still a selenium rectifier and it's still prone to give trouble. In fact, this was a high failure part in these radios. Now when we replace this with a 1N4007 diode, we'll have to use a resistor in series with the diode because the silicon diode is much more efficient and has much less voltage drop across it 
than this old selenium rectifier does. Generally the resistor value we use will be somewhere between 22 and 68 ohms, somewhere in that vicinity to get the voltage right. It's really not that critical, but you really don't want to have too much B plus voltage. Now just for fun, let's see what the output voltage of this selenium rectifier is running right now as one of the symptoms of these as they get old is they develop weak output. Another symptom is they short circuit and stink up your house with a rotten egg smell. Okay, coming straight off of the selenium rectifier, we're getting about 127 volts, which seems to be a little weak. I don't have the I don't have a schematic handy with all the voltage readings on it, but normally this should be about 140 volts or so coming off of the selenium rectifier. But yeah, this is a tad bit weak, I believe. And for a better look, here's the old selenium rectifier removed from the radio. Okay, I've settled on a 68 ohm 2 watt resistor. And after about 45 minutes of playing, it's running just barely warm, so no worries there. So just to show you what we have going on here, here's our AC coming in. Formerly this connected directly to the selenium rectifier's anode. But in this case, our AC comes into the resistor. The resistor comes out and connects to the anode of the 1N4007 diode and the cathode band. As you can see right there, the banded end denotes the cathode and that goes to your uh, B plus filter capacitors. Well, actually it goes through this fusible resistor and then to the filter capacitors. Another thing I also did was the original filter capacitors were rated at 150 volts. I used 200 volt capacitors because when you initially turn this set on, we're running about 175 volts B plus initially until the tubes warm up. And then once the tubes warm up and start conducting, then that places a load on the power supply and the B plus voltage comes down to around 135 volts, which is where it should be. So that those higher voltage rated filter capacitors just, just give a little extra margin of safety there. As you can see we're running about 173 volts at initial turn on. And as the tubes warm up, which takes probably about 45 seconds, you'll see it dropping down. There we are at about 137 volts, which is about where we need to be. And that's coming off of the diode. And that about wraps up this video. So in part two, we'll do a few more things to get as much sensitivity as we can out of this radio, and then we'll call it done. Okay, thanks for watching, and more to come later.